So it might be uh, useful to do a quick update and a quick video showing the um, the work that, uh, that I've done on the on the table here. Um, so I've slackened these off already. So I'll just remove the uh, the pillow block so we can have a look at the. table and so on. Now I found that um, I've already had this apart once and I found that the that the feed screw was a bit tight and um, uh, so I had a look at, to, to see um, how it adjusted and this is just to, to, to really just show that it might be helpful for somebody to take a look. Now the table is is actually very easy to move. I mean it's it's lovely. Um, that's just like it's just so silky smooth and this is just conventional I thought that, that the table had um, some kind of friction modifying material like um, tersite or uh, uh, something like that some kind of PTFE type material in fact it doesn't it's, uh, it's just straightforward cast iron it's, it's beautifully made um, tapered jib strip um, and, and was beautifully clean as well. The whole thing has got a centralised lubrication system, as I think I've mentioned before, which has been worth working perfectly. I found no real problems with the thing at all when I stripped it down, and so you can see that this is uh, this all moves absolutely superbly. Um, so if I push the table right back over to that's 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 hitting a, a stop there. Um, it might be handy to take that out actually. So there's a screw. There's a screw, Allen screw, just underneath the table here. If I remove that, then the table will go back further. It's a, it's very slightly tighter uh, when you go beyond its uh, where it's been moving, which is only to be expected. Um, it's um, it's been wearing away. Um, so that's still hitting a, a stop and I realise it's the stop on the front of the, of the table here. Um, so anyway, hopefully I, what I'll do is I'll bring the camera down and show a shot um, of, the, uh, of the pillow block for the table and just describe exactly what's going on there and, and, and how it works and then I'll pull the feed screw out so that, uh, so that we can take a look at that. Okay, so what we're looking at here then is just the uh, lower angle on the table and um, if I just zoom in slightly we'll be able to see the, the adjustment block what holds the what actually holds the uh, uh, the ball nuts I say nuts because there are two of them the ball nuts in place. Um, what you can see here is is there's an elasticone cover right the way over the top of the of the ball screw here, and then we've got this pilot pillow block arrangement here. Well, it's not really a pillow block because it's not got a bearing in it, but um, it's just the it's what actually holds the it's the retaining um, flange that holds the um, the 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 two ball nuts in place and this thing here is a vernier adjustment uh, device and uh, it allows you to adjust the preload I just withdraw that it al allows you to adjust the preload on the bearing by moving this screwed nut here so what I'll do now is I'll just disassemble this and pull it out and then we'll take a look at it um, uh, in a bit more detail. So I've removed the, uh, the three Allen screws from the, from the flange there that holds the, the and this flange here that holds the, uh, the ball screws in place and I'm just going to withdraw the whole assembly. I'm pulling it out and there you can see 
the ball screws and nuts, the ball screw here, and the two nuts, and this is the adjusting flange here. I'll put it down on a uh, in a more convenient place and uh, and film it from a different angle so that we can just have a have a closer look at it and see see how it all fits together and how it works. Before I do that, um, I'll just move the camera around so that we can see you can see on the ball nuts they've got a couple of keyways on them so the ball nuts aren't allowed to uh, rotate in the housing at all always go back in the same place <clears throat> and if I bring them just bring the camera around we can see let's just zoom in on that you can see inside the ball there there's a keyway. Uh, so it's a plain bore, precision honed bore into the bottom casting, and you can see that it's uh, that it's got a keyway here to to keep the the two nuts in exactly the same place in in orientation to each other. It might also be worthwhile um, just um, I'll, I'll do another shot just showing the the movement of the table and just showing exactly how silky smooth it is and uh, uh, just how little effort is required to move it. Okay so when I first, um, when we, well, the first video I did on the table here it was obviously the, the, the uh, stepper motor especially on the on the x-axis here was uh, was losing steps and um, uh, so I, I stripped the table down in order to um, to see what the problem was. In the end, I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually strip the table completely, because um, one, because the, the 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 top part of the table here is actually pretty heavy, um, and two, um, it was just abundantly obvious that the table was in such lovely condition, um, was very very clean, um, and I was only going to make it uh, dirtier and introduce contaminants in, into it. It's all settled into a, into a, a very nice. Um, uh, well run in condition so um, as you can see it takes very little effort to slide the table I've got the jib adjusted it's a taper jib I've got the jib adjusted so that it's um, it's um, it's very slightly tighter in fact than it was before but um, you know the table continues to move under its own inertia um, I get a good shove you can see it continues to move. Very slight adjustment out of the jib strip would allow that table just to carry on s sliding um, really easily. So it's, it's better. I'd rather have it just slightly tighter um, in order to um, to keep the finish uh, on the work as, as good as possible. Um, there's a lot of mass in this table. Um, so um, it probably won't make that much difference. We'll see, we'll, we'll see what it's like as we go along. So I wasn't particularly bothered about the... I thought, well, the table's very good. But what I did find was that the, um, the ball screw for the bottom slide was not adjusted properly. And in fact, um, I don't know how it had come about, but uh, there was far too much preload on the, uh, on the ball nuts. So I put those on the bench. Um, the ball screw assembly so we'll have a look at that in uh, in more detail now right so there's the ball screw on the on the bench a oh, nice clean piece of, uh, of rag and where that's come from it's usually filthy in here um, so we can see there's the elasticone cover and there's a, a on the, the this is all covered by the table and there's also a, a steel cover so there's no muck gets onto this ball screw this is uh, obviously a very high precision thing and it's uh, uh, you know a ground um, uh, ball screw I, there's no maker's name on it so um, I, I doubt the film and made it in-house but um, um, it's certainly a, a very nicely made thing so um, there are the two um, ball nuts as it were recirculating ball nuts and they they're closed off in the usual fashion with a couple of 
caps in them, so they're internally circulating. There's actually three for filling the filling the thing up, and it's got these keyways in it, as I mentioned before. Um, so uh, the two are assembled up so that when the whole assembly is in the casting, one of them comes up to the back of the casting there and the other one is then pressed forward against the other like with some um, adjustable nuts on I'm trying to think what machines I think Micron used to do it on, on some of their machines um, I think Lorch might have might have done it on, on uh, but certainly a number of manufacturers use this idea of using two nuts that you could adjust one to the other to take the backlash out of the out of the system and with these, of course, there's very little backlash um, uh, in, the, in the screw itself to the nut, but it does allow you to preload them and take any backlash that there may be out by simply pushing this one against this one so that they're, they're pushed together. Only very, very small amount. It's like adjusting up a, an angular contact bearing um, either by face grinding it or by having a spacer between the between the two, so it's very much like that, and and that's achieved with um, with this uh, this flange here, which as you can see, I might just adjust the camera actually and bring it round so that we can get in a bit closer to, to see this. Okay, so looking at this a bit more closely, we can see that this flange. Um, it contains basically a screw collar here which is um, got a very fine thread on it but you can also see that it's castellated is the wrong word it's a gear it's basically a gear form and and then engaging with it is this little device here and it's made so that these teeth it's basically a vernier um, adjustment device so the teeth on this end are half a tooth different to the teeth on that end and by turning the collar and by putting this back in one position or the other you can adjust the preload on the bearing by screwing the collar in by half a tooth which I think is uh, really clever little device but obviously extremely expensive to manufacture um, I noted the other day that uh, the equivalent Fellman machine um, uh, to this machine a more sophisticated thing to be to be sure but the equivalent one that they make now is something in in the region I think it starts at 179,000 Swiss francs which uh, at any exchange rate is an awful lot of money. Okay so I'm going to put this all back together now I'm not going to uh, to show this being adjusted because I've got it exactly where I want it so I'll put it all back together again and then I'll run the uh, I'll run it with the uh, the stepping motors going and you can see what a huge improvement it's made. Okay so the table's now running much much better uh, don't appear to have any we getting any lost steps. Now I've got it set for running at 2000 millimetres a minute. Seems to be fine. But it does occasionally make these grunting noises. Which I have been told is not down to it losing steps, but it down to uh, down to something going on where the process is unable to keep up. No idea. Again, the motors are. You know, I probably can stop them if I push hard enough. You've got a, an opening under on the underside of the. Uh, it's actually quite nice. These machines have little dials built into them. Uh, like a normal vernier dial on a manual milling machine and um, you can actually touch the dials underneath so that's what I'm doing, I'm just putting a bit of pressure on it underneath with my hand and there, I can stop that there but um, 
I've got to push pretty hard. Yeah, I can stop it there. I've got to push pretty hard to, to, to stop it. And I don't believe that there's, as I said, I'm not sure whether it's still losing steps or not. There's certainly nothing wrong with the ball screws and the table. It may well be that these motors are just not up to the job of, uh, of, of running the table. We'll, we'll find out. I'll, I'll do a few tests on it and see if it is losing, losing steps. Um, certainly, as, as soon as I put the motor tuning, if I changed, if I put the speed up, so I'll put the speed up to, I don't know, 3,000 millimetres a minute. Uh, now, will it handle that? Yes, it will, but I don't think it'll handle it consistently. So I think fairly quickly it will run. Yeah, there's some lost steps. It's just not quite up to it. As soon as it meets the slightest bit of resistance, I've got to push very hard on the bottom of there to make it lose steps. Conversely, if I put the speed right the way down to say, let's put it down to 1500. So I put it down to 1500 millimeters a minute and see what that's like. But it's still doing the, the funny squeaking noise. That is much harder to stop. That requires some real pressure to make it to make it stop. And certainly, I can lean on the table as much as I like. There's no way that I'm going to stop that from moving. I wouldn't like to be between it and a solid object because it is just going to carry on moving. But quite what all the funny little noises are, I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it at 2,000 millimetres. Uh, 2,000 millimetres a minute for the time being. And see how it responds to that. Um, so that's back to 2,000. We get another big grunt at the start then. Were that lost steps then? I don't know. Be interested to know if people think it is losing, losing steps. At the moment, I haven't got anything set up where I can, um, I can check to see if it is losing steps because I'd need to set it up so it came back to the same place all the time. And at the moment, I'm not familiar enough with Mac 3. I've only just managed to get the thing to actually move the uh, table around. Okay, so uh, I'll leave it there. Oh, in fact, just as a, a, a last thing, is I've looked at the torque curve for these motors, and um, there it's not particularly brilliant. So it could well be that um, some better stepping motors will, or, uh, or some more suitable stepping motors. There's nothing wrong with the stepping motors as such, but I noticed that um, the four and a half newton meters or the four newton meters that are claimed. Uh, for these uh, motors pretty well lies around the uh, one revolution a second uh, position so um, that's obviously only 60 rpm so um, uh, it drops off pretty quickly after that point uh, but it uh, we'll see um, they can be used for something else where I don't need to, to move so quickly, so I'm quite happy to, to um, swap them for, for some bigger motors, or some different motors rather. Well.